It's 10, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name's Rebecca. I work with Green Iowa AmeriCorps, and this is uh, how to eat uh, healthy and sustainably without spending a fortune. Today, we're going to talk about how you can eat sustainably, how you can eat healthy, and how you can do so on a fixed income. A lot of people feel like you have to be wealthy and have your own private garden and be able to shop at all organic grocery stores in order to be able to reduce your environmental impact for the food you choose, but today we'll find out that you don't have to. And you'll see a lot of the, you see me repeating myself a lot, that's because what is healthy for you and what is good for the environment and what's good for your wallet are often the same thing. So just a little bit about myself and the program I work for. Uh, like I said, I work for Green Iowa AmeriCorps. We're a federally funded uh, service group that does sustainability work home energy audits and environmental education programs such as this. Uh, we do free home energy audits. Some of you may have had uh, an energy audit from us where we, uh, we go in, we do a blow door test, we look for air leaks, we do uh, energy conservation and water conservation measures. So, uh, you all, we all feel like we know how we should eat, or at least feel like we should know how we should eat. We all have eaten at least once a day since the day we were born, pretty much. But here are just a few uh, headlines from a variety of news outlets all about what <laughs> is good to eat and what is not. So you'll see everything contradicts each other. You should drink wine, you shouldn't drink wine. Chocolate's good for you, chocolate's terrible for you. So what my hope to do with, with this presentation is to cut through all of that, <coughs> just tell you guys the basic facts, cut through all the, all the fad diets, everything, and just have a few simple rules so people can know how to eat healthy. So before we get started, I'd like you guys to do a little exercise. It's called the helpful plate exercise. I'm going to pass out a few plates. So just on your plate here, you have the five fruit groups. Vegetables, fruits, grains, protein, dairy, and dessert. Don't feel like you have to use all of these, but just divide up your plate, what you think you should eat in one meal. So you can, you can label it, like divide it in half, and label dessert, or <laughs> uh, buy it in a quarter, <laughs> label dairy, whatever you think is the most healthful meal. In order? No, I'm so, most you're, so you're dividing up your plate like a pie chart. So Yeah, so you cut, you cut up your plate like a pie chart and say how much of the plate should be that food <coughs> group. So it looks like we had a variety of answers in terms of how much fruit and veggies we should be eating, how many, much protein we should be eating. So here's the actual answer. So half of your plate should be veggies, a fourth protein, and a fourth whole grains. Well, half is fruits and veggies, but it's okay if it's mostly veggies. And just a little bit of fruit. So we're going to go over all the, all the categories and tell you what you should be eating out of all of them. So with fruits and veggies, you know, basically just taste the rainbow, right? Eat a variety of colors, variety of shapes, variety of sizes. There are no superfoods, right? You might have heard of like kale is a superfood, acai uh, berries are superfood. It doesn't matter what you eat as long as you vary your diet, vary uh, the color, eat you know different things eat every day, eat a variety of things. Uh, specifically, green leafy vegetables are very good. Um, a way to do so on a budget is with frozen food. Uh, there's a, you know, it can be hard to get fresh fruits and veggies, especially in Iowa in the winter. Uh, frozen foods are often picked, you know, fresher and then frozen. With the fresh foods, you know, they pick it when it's still green in California, ship it here, it ripens in the trunk, so it actually has less nutrients than, than the frozen veggies. Um, another good tip is if you know anyone on the women, infants, children, or food stamps, 
Uh, they started a program where you can go to the farmer's market and essentially have your WIC or food stamp dollars doubled so you can buy fresh locally grown produce. Uh, another tip for veggies is to eat seasonal vegetables, so gourds and tubers in the fall and winter, um, you know, strawberries in the summer, that sort of thing. So as far as 25%, uh, you all might have heard that grains, that whole grains are very good. Uh, you'll see two different grains here. One's the whole grain, it has the bran, the endosperm, and the germ. And what they actually do with the white grain is they remove the bran and the germ, and that gives it that white look, and it tastes you know, very sweet and very sugary. But it lacks a lot of the nutrients that is present in the bran and in the germ. And white grains essentially are just sugar, you know. Uh, polysaccharides are, you know, many sugars that are put together. So when your body breaks down the white grains, it'll just break it down into sugars. So that bowl of white rice might as well be a bowl of white sugar. So if you're going to eat grains. And <coughs> as far as meats, uh, lean is better. Non-red meats are better. Uh, chicken, fish, you don't need to eat meat to get the number, to get the protein you need. You can eat, you know, beans, lentils, rice, all that contains protein. But just, you know, make sure it's non-fatty meat and avoid red meat. So, I'm going to be using terms like red and white meat. And this is a little quiz to see if everyone knows what is red wheat, what is red meat, and what is white meat. So, a hamburger, is that red or white? Red. Great. What about a chicken breast? White. A turkey sausage? Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> red. 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 White. 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 Yeah. It's all, all birds are white meat. Steak? Red. red. Goat kebab? Red. red. Fish? White. 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 Crab legs. White. White. Hot dog. Not red. <laughs> red. <laughs> and also not very good for you. Uh, pork chop. Red. 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 Yeah, some people call it the other white meat, but it is actually red. red. Rabbit meat. <laughs> red. White. White. Oh. Mm. Beef jerky. Red. red. Uh, glad you guys got that one. Clams. White. 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 Yes. So here's a little tool to help you. So pork, beef, and most processed meats are going to be red meat. Uh, poultry, fish, and seafood are white meat. So yeah, as I explained before, white meat is the is the best meat you want to eat. It's going to be the most uh, lean and nutritious source of protein. Um, studies from Harvard have shown that reducing red meat and eating more white meat actually lower your risk of cancer and heart disease. So it actually has more nutrition than red meat or just leaner than red meat? That is a good question. I, like like I, I don't know like what's mechanistically different about red meat versus white meat. I think I know burnt red meat has something called cannabinoids which are a, a compound that have been shown to be a carcinogen. So it might be just red meat has other compounds in it other than protein that are carcinogens or have other problems as well. But that's a good question. Yeah, uh, turkey, sausage, turkey, dogs yeah. are reddish. Uh, are they dyed? Do they add a dye to make them look red? To make them look red, yeah. Yeah, turkey, well it depends on which part of the bird they're coming from, so if it's white meat, it would be white. Um, if it's, you know, dark meat, it'll be dark. It might be that they have some organs and other tissues that are in there that gives it the red color, or they might dye it red. But, you know, with sausage, it's usually not the choice, you know, meats. It's not that beautiful white turkey breast. It's going to be, you know, um, entrails, maybe some of the main body, maybe some of the other organs. So that might give it that sort of red color. Which okay. category is lamb? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. It's lamb. White or red? Uh, lamb's going to be red, like goat. Mm -hmm. So even the dark meat on turkey or chicken is considered white? Well, dark meat is its own category. So it's 
not as bad for you as red meat. It's going to be a little fattier than white meat, you know, which is why if you cook a turkey, the white meat is a little more dry and the dark meat is a little more, you know, it's moist and juicy. Uh, if you had a choice between white and dark meat, obviously the white meat's going to be better, but dark meat's going to be better than red meat. Okay. So pork and beef um, are going to be an occasional treat, especially the beef. You're going to want to avoid eating that on a regular basis, so maybe not a once a day or a once a week type thing, but maybe like on your anniversary or on your birthday, you know, but it's really uh, reducing that red meat intake is really going to lower your risk for a lot of problems. Yes? I got a reading yesterday from the Mediterranean diet that suggested just uh, one or two servings maybe a week of red meat. Yeah, sure. You know, that, that's good. That's a lot better than most Americans eat. But, you know, red meat is like smoking, not in terms of what it does to your body, but in terms of the less that you do is better. So there's no amount of red meat you need to eat, and if you can, the more you can reduce it, the better it's going to be for you. So if you eat red meat once or twice a year, that's better. If you never eat red meat at all, that would be that would be ideal. Um, processed meat. So these are the most high risk type of meat. So beef jerky, smoked sausage, bacon. Uh, I forget what those sticks are called. They sell them at the beef jerky. Beef, beef, oh, so yes. beef, oh, beef sticks. One beef. Yeah. So those highly processed forms of meat that essentially do not look like they were ever part of an animal at all, those are going to be the most high risk things and those are going to be things that you really want to avoid. So there are lots of ways you can get healthy proteins um, on a fixed income. Mm -hmm. Eggs are a really cheap source of protein as are canned tuna, cottage cheese, canned beans, lentils. Uh, not a lot of people in America like to eat organ meats, but they, because they're undesirable, they are often the cheapest cut of meat, and they also have uh, a lot of nutrition, especially liver. Liver has high vitamin A, um, gizzards, intestines, <coughs> all that have a lot of uh, really good vitamins, and they're very delicious and flavorful. So drinks. So the thing that you should be drinking is water. It's not very exciting, but water, tea, coffee are all really great things to drink. You want to avoid drinking sugary drinks, you know, pop, Gatorade, anything with added sugar. Lattes. Lattes, <laughs> you know. You can get the black coffee maybe with a little bit of sweetener in it, but you're going to want to avoid heavily sugar drinks. Uh, so, milk. How many of you heard in elementary school or whatever that you should drink a glass of milk a day? Mm -hmm. yeah. Three glasses of milk a day. That is actually a myth and, late, and the latest research at the Harvard T. Chan School of Public Health is showing that you don't even need milk. You can have a perfectly healthy diet without milk. Uh, their milk is not the best uh, source of vitamin, or sorry, calcium. It does, it's very high in calcium, but also contains a lot of vitamin A, which neutralizes calcium in the body. So calcium is strengthening bones. The vitamin A is weakening bones, weakening bones. So even though it's very high in calcium, you're actually worse off than when you start, or not as well off as if you just ate some broccoli or some kale or other leafy greens like that. Question? Yeah. Do you know, do you know if all dairy products milk, cheese, cottage cheese, ice cream, contain antibiotics that are, are still cows, mm -hmm. all so cows fed antibiotics. Chicken is changing. Right. So as far as I know, all cows still are being fed okay. antibiotics. Uh, if you get organic meat, it might not, or antibiotic free meat, it might not be fed antibiotics. Um, yeah, but just you have to know the producer. You, ha you have to know the producer. Um, sometimes places will claim to be organic and not actually be organic. You have to know the name of the cow or otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know the cow when it's a calf and suckler. Well, human beings are the only species that drink the mother mammals milk. Right, exactly. So, 
people in Europe think we're crazy. Yeah. Adults over there don't think we're crazy. So yeah, milk. So you don't need to drink milk for calcium. If you're worried about calcium, just eat some broccoli and yeah, avoid cheese and other things because those are very high in fat, but it is delicious. I do enjoy cheese myself. And the most sustainable way you can drink is out of your tap. So bottled water is a fad. You, know, you can see sparkling water, water from springs in Switzerland. Bottled water actually wastes a lot of energy because it's being bottled and then being shipped in a truck and then you drive to the store, pick it up in your car and bring it home. Uh, the tap and the water system is the most sustainable way that you're going to be able to get water. So, what do you guys think is the number one way that you can reduce your environmental impact through your food? Not eating any animal products. Mm -hmm. Might anyone disagree with that? Well, say number? it again. The, nu the number one way you can reduce <coughs> your environmental impact through your food? Eating no animal Grow it yourself. Any other ideas? Um, Try to avoid plastic packaging. Yeah, that's a good one. Any other ideas? On organic fruits and vegetables. Or organic, eating organic fruits and vegetables. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here's the answer. I revealed that to you a bit early. So the number one thing you can do is eating more plants <coughs> and less red meat. I say less red meat because red meat has the largest environmental impact of any other type of meat. So if you have to eat meat, you know, eat chicken, eat fish, something like that. Um, the second biggest thing you can do is to eat everything you buy. And the third biggest thing you can do is buy local. So this is what a lot of people think of when they think of sustainable eating is going to your local farmer's market. Um, this is very good because it reduces the, f the amount of time that the food is having to be shipped. But when you do buy local, you want to make sure you're buying seasonal food and food that can be grown effectively in Iowa. So if you see someone selling tomatoes at the farmer's market, that might not be the best choice because they grow in a more temperate climate. Or if you see locally grown pineapple, I bet you would ever see that. You know, that's going to be a lot more sustainable if you grow it in Hawaii than if you grow it here. So you want to be on the lookout for seasonal foods and foods that are grown best in Iowa's climate. The second biggest thing you can do is to reduce your food waste. A huge percentage of our food that we use is thrown away. A lot of that happens at the farm and a lot of that happens just at the consumer level. You know, people go to the grocery store buying too much, it goes in the fridge and they throw it away. So a great way to avoid that is to make a list plan all your meals, know exactly what you need to eat in one week, use all of it, eat all of it right away, you know, don't let anything sit in your fridge, don't make impulse buys. I am very bad at this. I do not make a food list at all. I just, everything's an impulse buy and I waste a lot of food. So a shopping list is great to reduce your environmental impact and also <coughs> save you money as well. And like I mentioned, the number one thing you can do is eating less red meat and eating less meat in general. Uh, here you see the amount of water it takes to produce a four ounce steak in the entire, you know, life cycle. Each of these jugs represents 100 liters, so this is going to be 2,400 liters of water. Uh, as a comparison, uh, so 100 calories of beef produce, it uses 1,000 liters of water. By comparison, 100 calories of broccoli uses 10 liters of water. Yeah, uh, I have somewhere in my library at home statistics on the aquifer that we sit on top of. Like in 1985, or no, 1885, the pounds per square inch fresh pushing up was 285, and like 30 years ago it was 90. Huh? And what you're saying right there is we cannot afford to feed beef or we will lose our water. Right, exactly. It's totally... And that's part of the cost of beef. Yes. And 
the agriculture industry will fight you tooth and nail, but mm -hmm. in my humble opinion, I don't have a degree in anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. No. Uh, yeah, it is totally unsustainable as more and more people in the world are trying to eat a more American mm -hmm. diet. They want to eat, you know, they want to eat big they want to eat big hamburgers. And if everyone in China and India tries to do that, we're doomed, you know. And we've been pretty, it's been pretty bad Americans living this lifestyle, but now other people want to live this lifestyle as well. And we're not going to have enough water to, you know, for everyone in that population to live that lifestyle. So we're going to need to start making some changes if we hope to feed everyone. All right, so that's all I have for you guys. I'm going to open it up to questions.